The first thing I wanted to build on the sliding table saw was a Fritz and Franz jig. Among other things, this is gonna allow me to rip long, thin pieces accurately while keeping my hands away from the blade and still taking advantage of the slider. If you wanna replicate this build, I'll leave a link to the flip stops, the T-Track, all the components used in this build in the description below. And at the end of the video, I'll show you what else this jig can do. Smooth. That's pretty good. We don't need to go flush because we're never going to be sawing anything thinner than that so perfect the front is cut to 150 millimeters and the back to 300 this is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene cuts like butter it's extremely slippery. It's perfect for this application. This is just a rough cut. I'm gonna sneak up on this accurately with the planer. I'm increasing the depth of cut here in very small increments. I've edited out about six or seven passes before getting to this point here. The max dado width on this saw is 20 millimeters and I needed just slightly larger than that. So I used the scales on the crosscut fence and just moved it over ever so slightly. Absolutely perfect fit. Just gonna scuff it up a little bit. Countersink bit. Punched out, and now we'll do some drilling.
let's switch out this drill bit for a countersink bit. The one issue with these <clears throat> tracks, because they're so narrow, if you've got one of those large multi-fluted countersink bits, it's not gonna fit inside your rail. So luckily I've got a, I believe this is a 3 8 countersink. And because these screws are really not very big, this countersink does not have to be very big either. I'm using the flip stops as clamping points. This will ensure that the rail is in just the right spot. A VIX bit is gonna keep my holes centered in the countersinks. Polyethylene requires a specific plastics glue. This JB Weld had five times the volume of its competitors for the exact same price, and it includes a mixing tray and a stir stick. The packaging says this can be a skin irritant, but my finger's my favorite glue applicator, and it was fine. Sink bit. Now I've got some two twenty grit sandpaper with adhesive backing. All right, if this sandpaper ever comes off, we can just uh, reattach it with some glue if we need to. But it is self-adhesive and it, it's actually quite strong. This is just a uh, adhesive bench tape. It's uh, right to left. This edge directly contacts the blade. And just to make sure of that, I'm gonna trim these ends off together on the saw. At this point, I realized that the screw was going to be in the way, so I removed it. The rule of thumb for cutting aluminum this thick on a table saw is to have 10 teeth per inch of blade diameter. I've got a 12 inch blade, but only 72 teeth. So I thought it would be safer to use the bandsaw first and then clean the edge off with the table saw, which worked well. These are in metric and imperial numbered right to left. Rather than buy a second bench scale, I'm cutting this off at the one meter mark. That way my metric side will still line up. Now we just need a handle. A 
Forstner bit and a drill press with a depth stop would be a much smarter idea here to ensure that the bolt head is below the surface of the plywood. And done. Let's see what it can do.